some of y'all still don't know what a multi-level pointer is. So most of the people that come to the forum, we tell them, do this, start here, beginner's guide. You'll learn a bunch of stuff about cheat engine pointers. You'll even learn how to get, uh, how to make a C++ trainer, to get how to get a module base, and how to use the find DMA function that is going to calculate the final address of a multi-level pointer for you. Some people do all this and they still don't know what the multi-level pointer is. It's not some fictitious, imaginary, magical list of offsets. They have a basis in reality. So I wanted to show that for some people that still don't get it. So I uh, made a little test project here that I'm going to show you are two functions that you should already be familiar with. And here is a kind of fictitious game I set up uh, with some different game structs. We have an actor object that has a player pointer to the player object, which has an inventory pointer to an inventory object. And the inventory object has an ammo pointer to an ammo object. And then we have a global pointer for a local player object of the actor class or struct. So the local, this is how the game keeps track of your local player. When the game changes modes or you start a new map, your local player object is probably recreated and the game keeps track of it using this global pointer. It will always be uh, in the same uh, address in memory relative to the base address of this process. Let's look at this quickly. Uh, so we're gonna, now you're just entered a game, right? And a death match or whatever, and you're playing, and it's gonna dynamically create your local player structs at runtime. The local, local player pointer is gonna be assigned the address of this new actor object that's gonna be uh, created on the heap. And then the player variable of the local player object is going to be assigned the address of a new player object, so on and so forth, okay? And so what is what is this line doing? Uh, it's doing exactly what we're gonna do with find DMA Addy. The assembler or the game logic, whatever you wanna call it, it knows that when you when you use the uh, the the pointer operator, I forget what the hell this is called, uh, when you dereference this to get to the player, it knows to to dereference the local player pointer and then add four to get to the player object and then it dereferences the player object using this operator which gets us to to the address that's here and then it's going to add offset eight to then get to our inventory pointer and it's going to dereference it again and it's going to get to this object it's going to add offset C to get to the ammo pointer. So that's what this line is doing. The point I'm trying to make here is uh, the, the multi-level pointers are not some like random magical list of offsets. Um, it's, it's a bunch of pointers and objects linked together with relative offsets. Uh, when you write this code and you compile it, the compiler looks at this and it creates the assembly needed to access those objects um, and their member variables and the pointers and the objects associated with them. So when we do it in our hack, we're doing basically the same thing that the compiler did, except we don't have any source code. All right, so now let's check this out in Cheat Engine and see what it looks like. Um, so let's start the debugger here, and I've already attached a cheat engine. We know that the base pointer, um, which is the local player pointer, is 13C53F8. Uh, we're going to make it a pointer. We've got four offsets. So 0x4, 8, C. And 10 and we got our 1337 so we know it's working fine and we know the address of the variable is correct but so let's scroll up here for a second and look at this uh, screen again 
So here's our base address, right? This is local. This is the local player pointer. And it points to 20E5B8, which is the address of the new actor object here, right? So now we're at this address and we add offset four to it to get to the player pointer, which is which is then dereferenced and it points to this address, which is the player object. We add eight to it to get to the inventory pointer. We dereference it here, and then we get this address, the address of the inventory object. Then add C to it to get to the ammo pointer. We dereference it and get this address. Okay, which is the address of the ammo object. We add offset 10 to it to get to the 1337. And then this here reads the value that's in the address. Okay, now for the next output here, hit enter, and it's going to give us our function output. Right, so we got our module base using our function. We calculated the relative offset, which is the address of the local players, minus the module base. And that relative offset is 0xf3f8. So at runtime, we get the module base address of pointer tester.exe, and we add the relative offset. We can try that in Sheet Engine right now. So we no longer are using this hard coded address um, that's going to change because the the address where the executable or perhaps a DLL is loaded will change. Uh, so we want to do it dynamically, right? So let's add in pointer tester.exe and 0x53f8. And I can't spell. There we go. All right. So that works. Perfect. And as we can see, the address of the variable 1337 is identical so our c code where we're just referencing the structs we made and then our accessing of it using our normal hacking methods works perfectly so uh you probably most of you may know this but there's a i'm telling you a lot of people do not get that there is logical reasons why this pointer exists and this is obviously a really simple example um but I think it illustrates really well uh, what the game logic does and how your pointer paths that you're reverse engineering, you're, you're just reversing the exact logic that the compiler and the assembler make for the CPU to execute. Um, it's, re it's really simple and beautiful. I really hope this is the last pointer tutorial I need to make. Peace out.